how to make good PCBs by the spray-on photoresist method. You will need the following items in this part. Step 1. Clean the copy clad board thoroughly with the steel wool. Avoid touching the clean copper with bare fingers to prevent re-greasing. Grease or dirt on the copper spoils its paint adhesion properties. Step 2. Spray the cleaned copper surface with the photoresist. This step does not need to be done in a dark room, but avoid spraying in bright light. The spray is article number 126, bought at Communica in Pretoria for about $20. I am sure lots other places stock it. Spray at a distance of about 30 cm, or approximately 1 foot, from the board. Spray at room temperature. Don't worry too much about a speckled appearance of the coating. The paint will spread out more evenly into a thin film as it dries. Step 3. Let the board dry. Dry the board in a dark cabinet for 24 hours. The coating has evened out and the speckled look is gone. Step 4. Prepare the required PCB pattern for printing. I use Eagle CAD, which is free, easy to learn and has excellent support libraries. This example is the TCD2557CCD module of my low-cost UVIR spectrometer project. I normally print two copies to transparency at times one scale, even though one would likely do. I overlap and staple the two prints for better image definition. The toner is opaque to UV light and the exposed parts of the image can be developed out later. Step 5. Exposing the pattern on the board with UV light. This is my original, homemade UV Xpure box. It works well but there is lots of room for improvement. If there are likes on this video, then I will post another video on its detailed construction. Here is a dry, spray-coated board. I recycled this board from an etching process that was stopped prematurely. Place the board over the pattern transparency. Be sure to have the pattern the right way up. Always check to be absolutely sure. Step 6. Expose the board. Turn the exposure unit on. The best exposure time is exactly 5 minutes on my light box. Any shorter and the image does not form correctly. Any longer, and even grease or dirt on the scanner glass gets imaged on the board. I found the best exposure time by trial and error. Step 7. Develop the image. I used 7 grams of sodium hydroxide, also known as caustic soda, in 1 liter of cold tap water. This is about 15 of the pellets shown in 1 liter tap water. I live in the Drakensberg Mountains. My tap water is rich in mineral content. So I guess distilled water isn't particularly necessary for this step.
I have also tried the caustic soda flakes sold at a local supermarket for unblocking drains. A teaspoon of this cheap stuff also does the trick, although it has added magnesium. The reaction with water generates some heat, so take great care. Next, remove the board from the light box and inspect its surface. You may just see a light impression of the pattern on the purplish film right after exposure. Place the exposed board into the developer solution. I am using a halved 5 liter vegetable oil container as the development tank. The bent wire is just to help agitate the board and speed up development. When satisfied with the developed pattern, rinse the board thoroughly in clean tap water. This stops the development process. Inspect the board, the method gives near-perfect results almost every time. End of Part 1 In Part 2, I will show you the ferric chloride method of etching.